do you prefer making plans for a project or do you prefer to have plans made for you and then carry them out? Uh, I'm, I like making my own plans. Um, ironically, the film that I just directed, Hipsters, Gangsters, Aliens and Geeks, is only really the second time since Forbidden Zone that I've directed my own material. The other stuff, I've been a hired gun. And it's exhilarating and this is where I like to be. I plan my dinners, I plan my films. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay, so down to the course. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 it's a, you know, particularly when I'm cooking for a lot of people, I, I go through every step of what I'm gonna do beforehand, just like a shot list for a film, mentally. It, you know, because you've got to be organized with all this stuff happening and then something like a spice is missing or the fire's too hot. Or a celiac shows up. Yeah, and yeah. And you don't know that. Yeah, yeah, So what yeah. do you do? How do you improvise? <laughs> you just roll with the punches. But I'll, I'll cook for up to 200 people, you know, with helpers. Oh, okay. With helpers. Okay. So do you almost see dinner as its own theater? in some sense, the theatrics of, of getting everything ready and chopping it up. Yeah, yeah, I, I, again, I'm an entertainer. And also one of the things I said, I, I, I've been a food and wine columnist forever. And I look at us as spiritual beings in a physical body. And the way the physical body experiences the universe is through our five senses. And just like art for the eyes, music for the ears, the palate is also one of the ways that we as spiritual beings experience the universe. And that's something that I really, I, I lived in France for three years. Uh, and that's something that I, I really took in was the art for the palate with food and wine. That's interesting. How do you see the French experience with uh, film versus uh, the American experience? <laughs> well, I, I was in a theater company. Uh, and <laughs> Uh, we had a hit show and we were in one film and the French would drink wine during lunch oh, and it would be oh. hours before they'd get the next shot off. <laughs> no, that's uh, the problem, yeah. And, and, and then there's that. like, uh, we have our kind of three act story structure, you know, an inciting incident, da 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 da, -da then the finale. Okay, the French story structure is they don't take off their clothes and screw till the second act. Oh. <laughs> That's good. They show yeah. some reserve. They, they yeah, build up to it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's an arc. No, no, but I appreciate the... I, I love France. My, one of my sons is half French. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, they're, they're amazing. Uh, they're amazing in everything that they do, the French, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But I know that they have a very you know, specific approaches to things, and I just wondered, do you think that Americans are super controlled in their approach to the artistic process, or that's just a fallacy? I, I don't, I, I, people are different in every culture. And you'll find, you know, left brain, right brain, you'll find everything in every culture. Sure. Would you say you're right brain? Uh, <laughs> pretty much so, although I, I, I've kept one foot in business at the same time. So I've got a little bit of a left brain. Right. The right brain gets it into trouble. Kind of old Steve Jobs is, is someone that I idolize. And uh, he had seemed like both in many ways. And so do, do you see that as being a blessing or is it in some ways difficult to compartmentalize the right versus the left because one will fight with the other? Well, one, okay, so like, like, like one wants money for the project and the other <laughs> wants to pay the bills. You know, so we do have, uh, <laughs> you know, that... Uh, Sure, it's a total I, I, I don't know, like I'm thinking of that Seinfeld episode where the Mr. Penis and Mr. Brain are arguing with each oh, other no. over who, who gets to do what. I wasn't expecting that reference. Okay, I was thinking of another one. But. Oh, and I, I have one more answer that I thought of <laughs> earlier for the, can you ask me the one about the dealing with adversity and stuff like that? Oh, please, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I put on big parties and big events. So I've got something, I'm co-hosting it with a major Hollywood producer. We've got all these big wigs, black tie. So I'm, I'm a Afro-Latin percussionist. I play in a Brazilian uh, bateria. Uh, so I had an Afro-Brazilian group, the sweetest people you'd ever meet, voice and percussion. And people are all drunk and you know, like the, the music's going. And I've got the head of a studio with his bimbo. So as they passed my musicians, he made some denigrating remark. Boy, why couldn't they get some real music? 
and it cut these guys. It was the biggest night of the year for them. And so I don't know if it was the two bottles of champagne or the full moon, but I picked the little fuck up and threw him in the swimming pool. There you go. And like Dracula, like you're never going to work again. I've got tuberculosis. You know, he went in the pool. He didn't like it. Uh, and everyone secretly like going, oh, loving it. And then his bimbo went off like a banshee. I threw her in. And I went back to my Brazilians and apologized for his boorish behavior. Oh, wow. Bourgeois or boorish? Boorish. Oh, I see. Okay. I was going to say, it could uh, be either. And but... as he said, I didn't work for a few years in Hollywood. Is that, is that, <laughs> is that a foul? I mean, is, or is it so controlled that really if you don't acquiesce to someone, not even have a confrontation at that level, but let's suppose there's a slight, someone feels slighted. Could that really ruin someone's career? Uh... I'm not sure it's uh, I mean, also what happened is I've always kept one foot in like real estate investment and development. And when I threw them in, I was worth so many million and then the market crashed and I wasn't worth that much a year later. Oh. So that affected things. It might have affected my decision if I knew the market was going to crash. Was this two bottles like of champagne oh. notwithstanding? I see. OK. You think money gives people confidence? It helps. Mm -hmm. You know, you can hire a lawyer and get out of trouble. But not just that, not just the, the legal aspect, but in terms of how you approach things. If you feel well, that... By me having, call it like the left brain side, and having at least some real estate income coming in every month, uh, if I'm modest, I don't have to work, and I can just choose projects that I, I like. Hmm. So I'm not forced to take jobs that I hate. Sure. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, sure that helps. You know, I've I've got a family. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just you know, there's the the a lot of debate about that, but I would imagine that having um, knowing that you could not have to do something that you don't want to do for a year and be okay probably lends confidence to how you approach things, and then that yeah brings yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it does it does. I, I I watched my father. God, he he'd often have two three jobs. He eventually became a school teacher. He's supporting two families, one from before the war, one from after the war. He'd get up before dawn and deliver milk, then have tutoring things in the evenings and on weekends, had factory jobs. Uh, I've had to do a bit of that, but not to the degree that my father had to. That's interesting. Yeah, you know, I, I was listening to the author John Updike speak, and he saw his father struggle as well, and he was a teacher, and, and it just he knew that he didn't want to be a company man, and I'm not not to use that in a derogatory term, but in terms of being sort of owned by somebody and knowing that that ownership can tell you, okay, now it's time to go, and all the problems that that causes. So, did you know that you never wanted to sort of work a corporate job because of that same side of? Same sort of... Uh, I, I just, I've been blessed enough that I really haven't had to. I, I've done, I, I've been a cab driver, I've been a busboy, I've tended bar, uh, but those things were shorter term and, and voluntary while I was doing artistic stuff. Right. And, and right now I, I don't have to do stuff like that. Oh. You, you tend bar for yourself. You, for, I tend you're, you're, for, for, friends for friends and family, and family for yeah. cast and crew, <laughs> but that's my pleasure. Sure, that's, that's, sure. that's my greatest enjoyment yeah. is to, to cook and feed people. That's and to entertain them. We do theatrical dinners. That sounds nice. Yeah.